So just because you're self-publishing your book, does that mean you can't get publicity? Not according to my guest today, the publicist, Dawn Michelle Hardy, who is also a friend of mine, who's going to really give us a good schooling in how a self-published author can and ought to seek publicity for your book. My name is Kelly Notaris. I am an editor of 20 years here in the publishing industry in the United States. I am the founder of KN Literary Arts. We're an editorial studio helping authors just like you get from wherever you are now to having a book in your hand. Visit us at knliterary.com. But you can also go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you yourself have a book dream and you could use some help. I leave all of the best information I've gotten from working at some of the biggest publishers in the U.S. right here in these videos. So go ahead and subscribe and be sure to click the little bell icon and that way you'll get a notice every time I have a new video. All right, so today's wonderful presentation is actually a little different than usual. Usually it's just me talking, but I've invited my friend Don Michelle Hardy to join me here. Dawn is a publicist who has worked with lots of different types of authors, including both self-published and traditionally published authors. And today she's going to bring us all of her wisdom. So a little bit about Dawn. She received the name The Literary Lobbyist from Ebony Magazine for her ability to get authors to reach their readership using strategic promotions to win awards and garner national and local media attention. She's got, had multiple roles in the book publishing industry. She's a publicist, a literary agent, and a self-publishing consultant. She founded her company Dream Relations PR and Literary Consulting in 2004 and expanded into agenting in 2011. As a publicist, she spent the past 16 years managing pre-pub details and publicity elements for debut book campaigns, consisting of things like galley mailings, development of proper angles and pitches for both national and regional mediums, quote requests, coordinating and implementing book tours, award submissions, and speaking engagements resulting in several bestseller lists, also year-end lists, and other distinctions for self-published authors. She passionately represents authors of fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and children's books. So without further ado, I bring you my friend and the amazing publicist, Dawn Michelle Hardy. Dawn, I'm so excited to be here with you. It feels very exciting to get to talk to you for professional reasons, not just for fun. Yeah. Um, so I am really excited specifically to talk to you because so many of our clients and the people that find me on this YouTube channel are mm -hmm. interested in self-publishing and they want to know, should I think about publicity for self-publishing? So that's really what I want to talk about. But before we get into any of that, I want to hear from you. Well, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit about how you fell into publicity? Because I know it's an interesting story. Oh, yeah. And then also, if you can discern for us the difference between publicity and this thing that we talk about all the time, which is platform building or marketing. So okay. I'll just turn the mic over to you. So I got started in publishing in 2002, and I was basically serving as an assistant to a self-published author. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you're helping with a little bit of sales and cover copy and editing and, and cover design. And out of everything that I was doing, I really liked the publicity aspect, which publicity mm -hmm. is active promotion, active um, pursuit of media opportunities to let the media and consumers know that a book exists. So out of everything that I was doing, that's the part that I loved the most. It was a high, you know, getting an author magazine interview, a television interview. So I built my agency around publicity. But the difference between publicity and platform most people like platform is something that proves that you already have a relationship with the people who should be reading your book. So a lot of times authors are asked like, who are you writing this book for? And once you answer that platform basically says, I'm writing this book for people who are looking to get married. And I already have a blog or a podcast where I've been com uh, conversating with this group of people who want to get married. And now I'm just going to give them a book to keep the conversation going. So platform basically is proving that you already have an active relationship via blog, podcast, email list with the ideal readers for your book. And when you, that makes it just that much easier to promote a book because you already, I liken it to being in an auditorium. Platform means that you already have people in the seat waiting to hear from you. Mm. You've been talking to them. So when you don't have a platform, that means that you're entering into an empty auditorium and you're standing at the podium and you're hoping that people will come in and sit down and listen to what you have to say. But when you have a platform, the room is already filled before you even get in there. 
That's a, I love that example. That makes yeah. so much sense because that really does distinguish then. So it's not to say that once you have the auditorium filled, you, you still don't do publicity, but publicity right. can be one way that you actually get people into the seats for your next book or whatever it is that you're doing after this one. That's the great. The platform is, is basically allowing you to connect with the first wave of people that are going to buy your book because you already have a relationship with them. They already find you credible. They respect what you have to say. What you've given them thus far is helpful. And now you're just adding one more product to your presentation, which is the book. Yep. So it, you've already proven to them. And then their feedback and reviews is going to help you then get the next wave of people who may not know about you yet. And that's right. where the position comes in. And so reviews is where you sort of tip over into publicity, right? Yeah. So yeah. do you want to just define publicity for us and give us some ideas of like the kinds of things that as a publicist, specifically mm -hmm. working with self-published authors that you go for? Yeah. So publicity is, again, the active pursuit of media opportunities to promote, you know, the book or, or the author. Um, and again, so as a publicist, it could be radio interviews that I'm going after, podcasts. Obviously, the holy grail is everybody wants to be on television. Um, you know, O Magazine was- I was just about to say, we got Oprah there somewhere, yeah, I know it. O Magazine, um, you know, there's, there's some social media in that news, local newspapers, um, as well as events. But again, publicity is saying, if I'm featured on Good Morning America, the viewers who watch that segment on Good Morning America now are aware of my book. And that viewing audience is gonna be in the millions, which you as an author one-on-one -on -one, is gonna take you a lifetime to get to a million individuals. So you right. get publicity because you're leveraging that particular platform's audience to promote your book. So Good exactly. Morning America has an audience across the country. When you do publicity and you get an interview on there, now people across the country are aware of your book. And that's why publicity is good because no author, one-on-one, -on -one, you're never going to be able to reach all of your readership doing one-on-one -on -one transactions. So right. you need publicity to leverage larger groups of people. Got it. So, so I mean, that America is like filling up a football stadium. I was just about to say like, good morning, America. Just, I'm glad you brought that up because that is obviously one of the biggest outlets. One of the outlets that most authors want because they believe that it's going to, you know, make their book and, you know, to greater or lesser degrees, I definitely have heard that the, the average number of books that get sold off of an appearance on good morning, America is like 800, which you would think it would be like 8,000 or 80,000, but it's actually 800. It just, and that's the average. Obviously, there's some people who would get much more than that and other yeah. people who would get less than that. But that's a good example because that's such a huge mainstream outlet. And I yeah. wanted to ask you, like, as a self-published author, should you be aiming for Good Morning America? Well, here's the thing. It's really about the topic. And, and authors have to think beyond what their hearts desire. Yeah, we all want to be on Good Morning America. But right. think, about, <laughs> think about the, I always tell my clients to think about if you're the producer. Your goal is to have everyone, as many people, as many households as possible, tuning in to the show. Mm -hmm. So you're mm -hmm. putting someone on the show, whether they're self-published or not, that is going to gather the most audience. Got so it. most times self-published authors don't have the distribution. They may not have the proper cover. Their book isn't quite as polished enough for a producer to feel secure that on a national scale, this is the ideal person. So you might have a great topic. But what they're going to do is they're going to find a more established author who has a platform, mm -hmm. whose book has been published with a major, um, and have that person come on and talk about that. Right. You know? right. So, so again, when you're self-published, there's so many other things you have to have in place, but national attention, you really have to like dot all your I's and cross all your T's. It's not- Right. And I mean, that makes so much sense to me. And I love the way you're saying that, that like, in a way the, you're saying that Good Morning America is its own platform. Yes. And they want to leverage someone who also has a different platform because everyone wants it to be a win-win. Yes. So those of us who maybe don't have a huge platform, you know, for me, for my book, for example, I would never have thought I would get on Good Morning America. My book is sort of a niche for just for people who want to write a book, mostly okay. for people who want to write nonfiction. Like that's a pretty small group for such a huge outlet that's trying to reach so many different types of people. Right. But... I know that you have actually had some success working publicity with indie authors. So I'm curious, what are some more, let's say, reasonably sized, um, but also impactful placements that you would suggest an indie author go for? Okay, so I think that all authors, you know, whether they're self-published or not, should, should start in their local market. Because here's the thing, if you live in Philadelphia and you can't get on NBC Philadelphia, the right. likelihood of you being on the Today Show is very slim. 
Because mm-hmm. if people in Philadelphia who you probably run into and you've been at events, if they're not interested, then why would the Today Show, which again is now a national scale, that's covering all 50 states. So I always tell authors, start with your local newspapers, the local free magazines, and then the local TV and, and, and radio affiliates. Like that's mm-hmm. the ideal place to start. And then you have a book event at one of the local bookstores. So start right, right in your own community. Because again, what's the tie-in? If you want to be on Good Morning America, again, it has to be something that covers a national topic. But if you haven't actually discussed that in your own local market, and then oftentimes with self-published authors, why you want to promote your book? When you get on television, it's not necessarily about your book. Unless you're writing a novel, when you're writing nonfiction, it's about the topic. So yes. I had an author who self-published at the beginning of the year, and her book is about how to future-proof yourself. So like right now, we're in COVID-19, people are losing their jobs, yes. trying to switch careers, and she's basically put a plan in place on how to make that happen. Her TV segment in her local Houston market was basically about reassessing if the job you have now is the right job for you. So she was introduced as the author of the book, but the segment wasn't sitting down asking an author about how she wrote her book. It was a wider topic for the community about careers and job placement. So again, a lot of times if you want to get publicity, you have to think beyond your personal book and think what's the conversation or the message that I can get started in the community at large. That's such a good, I mean, it's such a good point and so clear. And for those who are watching this, who actually haven't written their book yet, because a lot of the people that are watching this YouTube channel haven't actually gotten their book out in the world yet, this now is the time to think about what's my topic? Is it something that a wide variety of people are going to be interested in? And who is my ideal reader? Because that's also what those publicity outlets, you're going to target which outlets you go for based on where your readers are actually taking in their news. Right, because a lot of authors will always say, "Oh, my book is for everybody," and you and I, Kelly, know that that's not true. No, thank <laughs> like, you. So, thank you. I'm like, thank don't, you. don't say that. Like, you know, whatever the size of the audience, if you just focus your message and your promotional efforts to that demographic, a lot of authors can have great success by just focusing on on a, on a niche market. Because if you if you try to cast too much of a wide net, you wind up not getting anything back. Mm-hmm. Totally. So I always say, start local and focus on your target audience. And, and then you know, over, over the years you'll expand. But I also tell self-published authors, you should spend one full year, 12 months, all four seasons, promoting the one book. Wow, I love that. That's, so tell me why, what is it that says to you that, that you need to spend at least a year? Because in the summertime, there's different opportunities for events and different press than there is in the winter, in the fall, when you know, it's the fourth quarter and businesses are trying to make more money you know, pilot win in the election year. So November is going to be really loud with the results of the election. But, you know, if your book came out in May, you had more likelihood to, to get some publicity. So you have to go through all seasons because tons of opportunities come and go based on the season. And then also with TV, a lot of times, depending on the topic, TV and print magazines, they take months. So right. if you start pitching someone in January, the opportunity may not actually manifest until May or right. June. So right. that's why you shouldn't then be putting out another book six months because now producers are saying, oh, we want to interview you for book one. And now you're promoting book two. So I think all authors should at least spend an entire year promoting so that you can really maximize and explore all the opportunities that, that are available. And then that, as you, learn, you you make modifications to your pitch and things of that nature. But one year per book is, you know, is I, I just think is just the best way to go. Anything less than that, you're, you're going to lose out on opportunities. Great. Everything you're saying, I could, I could like, I could ask you 25 questions about what you're saying, but I love that. And what you just said was something I thought was really important. So you talk about sort of changing your pitch so that your pitch, you know, that the story isn't that, you know, Joe Smith wrote a book. Yay. That's like, like, that's never breaking news. That's never breaking news. Books out that didn't, you know, that we didn't necessarily know, but if you went on Amazon right now, there's, there's books by Oprah that you're probably like, Oh, I never knew that this book was coming out. Yeah, because it's not breaking news. Like everybody's putting books out. And with self-publishing, that literally means everyone can put a book out. So a book being published is not breaking news for any outlet. So what is breaking news? Breaking news is more so when you can tie into current events or if you've won an award or you've hit a landmark sale. Like if you're a self-published author and your debut fantasy novel sells 20,000 copies in the first week and you're self-published, 
that's breaking news. That is breaking because news. Now, sure. Because now the publishing industry is like 20,000 copies in a week, and, and yep. you're not with the publisher. You know, libraries and newspapers are thinking the same thing, and then that becomes a story because they want to know not even so much what the book is about, but how did you sell 20,000 copies? That's, it. that's mm -hmm. what the story is going to be about. You know, totally. you'll, get to talk, you'll get to talk about your fantasy novel, but the breaking news is that you sold 20,000 copies in a week as a self-published author. Totally. So actually putting a book out is not news. It's what the book accomplishes becomes the news. Yep, 100%. It just sort of reminds me of um, a book that I published when I was at Hyperion, and it was a book about this woman who was a blogger in Washington, D.C. I don't know if you remember this story. It was called The Washingtonian, and she was sort of giving up that she was having these affairs with these, like, senators and stuff, and she ended up writing a novel about it, right? So if that novel had come out and it hadn't had that tie-in, it hadn't had the, the risque sort of expose right. that had happened when she'd been discovered as this, like, secret blogger, I don't yeah. know that we would have gotten any publicity for it, but we got a ton of publicity for it because it tied it into something that was headline. considered newsworthy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so then let's talk a little bit about some things that people can do who don't necessarily have what we would call a newsworthy topic. So a lot of the people that follow me are writing books in the self-help, personal growth space. Yeah. That's not a space that the mainstream media has yet deemed newsworthy, <laughs> unless something's gone very, very wrong. <laughs> exactly. So, so like, what, what does someone do if your topic is the topic that, you know, it actually really, like, like is what you're teaching, let's say. You're a teacher, mm -hmm. you're a healer, you're a coach, or something like that. So it's really germane to that topic, but it's not really newsworthy. Is there any publicity that you would suggest somebody go for? Yeah, because here's the thing. Like, the publicity, again, is, is doesn't have to be as as big as GMA or, or the New York Times. So even if you're doing, let's say you're doing a, a yoga book, you know, yeah. like a, a yoga book for beginners, you start with that community. The way to get publicity is there are websites that cover health and wellness. So if it's just for women, then there are uh, lifestyle sites for all women, you know, black women, millennial women, working moms. So you yeah. go to those lifestyle sites because again, it, once you know who your audience is, you go to where your audience is. Yeah. So again, you go to those lifestyle sites for women and pitch for health and for health and fitness. So again, you're not going to get, you know, cover stories on a magazine, but you can get publicity because you go directly to platforms that speak to the audience in which you wrote the book for. So if you wrote totally. a book, Yoga for Women, then you go to platforms who offer content on health and wellness and lifestyle for women. That's yeah. where your publicity is. Yeah, and that's just such a good segue into just a little bit about the discernment between print or TV media versus online. So okay. just tell, to, I'm sure you have a lot to say about that, but yeah. what, what, would you, what distinctions would you make for our, for our self-published indie authors? So here's the thing. So as of, what month are we in? So as of August 2020, um, it was already announced that O Magazine is no longer going to be in print. But wow. they will be doing Oprah.com. So that is an example. I've always told authors, yes, you can be published in a magazine and everybody loves, I have tear sheets and you love to have a tear sheet, but that's only one publication for one month. So if for whatever reason, I didn't get the August issue, yes, then I still have no idea that your book exists. However, if I get you that online presence, then that link can be shared and is going to be on there for decades to come. Yeah. And, and people can happen upon it by doing keyword searches where they, they still don't know about you, but they put in something and your article on Oprah.com shows up. So a lot of times people want, there's a level of sexiness about getting into print, but at the yeah. same time, a lot of magazines are no longer printing and they're only going digital because digital is more effective. You have, it increases your opportunities to get publicity because every website is putting up multiple stories every single day, 365 days a year. So you increase the opportunity of how you can actually get on Oprah.com versus there's only 12 issues for the year. So that's yeah. only 12 opportunities if you want to be in print versus endless opportunities on a daily basis to be seen online. And then online, you can circulate that internationally as well. Yeah, and online is forever, like you're saying. I mean, at, at any point, someone might search for your topic and find your book because of that online article that you wouldn't happen if it was in the magazine. I really like that. Exactly. Like, so print, you know, is, is, is one, one and done. You know, yeah. you can have a great layout, but again, if everyone doesn't have access to that magazine, then they've never seen it. 
And that's the same for, as broadcast, right? If you don't listen yeah. to the radio sh program or you don't see the TV show, it's over. But if yeah. you get some sort of like a, an interview with someone on YouTube, it's going to be there forever. Absolutely. You know, same thing with podcasts. I remember when Blog Talk Radio first started, you mm -hmm. know, there were some authors that was like, Blog Talk Radio? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, they, they just saw that as so beneath them because they wanted to be on their local FM dial. And I was like, listen, Blog Talk Radio is going to grow because a lot of things are going to be going digital. And now that's like one of the best platforms for authors. Yes. There's tons of shows, sports shows, cooking shows, all that are done through Blog Talk Radio. Same thing with broadcast. You want to be on your FM dial. So if I'm not tuned in at 9.05 Wednesday, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, for your three minute conversation, then I missed it. Because yep. most uh, radio stations are not going to give you an MP3 that you can then share and create right. a newsletter. So again, if I'm not tuned in at 905, then I've never heard your radio interview. Right. It's so it sounds to me like for what, for what I'm hearing from you, and I think this is my own also take is the, the distillation is that for an indie author, if you want, if you feel that like desire just to have some sort of print or broadcast, go local. Go yeah. to your local, you know, radio station, your local TV, local newspapers. But yeah. if you want to be global and have more bang for your buck, go with yeah. online media. Yeah, absolutely. And, and here's the thing. Even if you, so when you go local, that's looked at. So if a producer is uh, producing for a national television show or a national uh, syndicated radio show, they're going to do their own research to see if your local affiliate covers you. Uh -huh. That's kind of consideration. If, if your local radio station didn't cover you, why would I want to have you on my syndicated radio show that's covered in 18 states? Right. Yeah, totally. You know? That makes so much sense, right? It's sort of like the place to start and it, it could plant yeah. seeds for the future. But, Absolutely. you know, it's just like one of those places where, as you and I both know, working with authors, no matter wh whether they're published by traditional publishers yeah. or indie publishers or they're doing their own thing, Managing expectations is a big part of the job because so many people assume if you publish a book, you're going to be on Good Morning America or the Today Show, and you're going to be a New York Times bestseller. But our job is to actually bring you down to earth and yes. say, even though that's not where you are right now, you, there's a lot you can do, and there's a lot, and it will actually bear fruit for you. Yeah, and and again, it's just it's just a patience game. Like you know, that that's what, another reason why I say that you should spend one year doing active promotion and publicity for your self-published book, because sometimes it's really just a waiting game. Like I know a woman who started out as a relationship blogger about her own experiences, her moving to New York. Then mm -hmm. she wrote a book about that. Simon and Schuster picked up that book. And then for years, her platform was, she joined all of these online Q and A platforms where people could just submit dating and relationship advice and scenarios that they were in. And for years she was answering back. And then mm -hmm. she also went on Good Morning America to talk about a dating show. So at this point, it took years for her to get on Good Morning America, but it wasn't about her book. It was about the fact that she was able to give dating advice. So when she was brought on Good Morning America, it was because they saw that her platform was, she shared so much information on dating advice and they wanted her to come on Good Morning America to share dating advice. Yes, yeah, no she plug. made herself into an expert. No plug for the book. No plug for the book. But you know, yeah. now that, ra that raises her star and people can look up and say, oh, that's the author of XYZ book who was just on Good Morning America. But it took years. And when she finally got on Good Morning America, it wasn't about her book at all. It was about right. dating. Right. I think that's such a, a good, important thing to, to say. Yeah. Again, people think the book is going to be the hook, but it's not when it comes yeah. to publicity. There's got to be yeah. something that's bigger than that. Well, we, you and I, as we've talked about, we could talk forever. I want to make sure we touch on one more topic, which is that one thing that you, that you seem to love, we've talked about it before, is people getting on, getting awards for their books. It seems like yeah. that's something that as a publicist, you try to encourage people to submit their book for different Absolutely. awards. I'd love to know why. What, what does that get for somebody? So here's the thing. When you're self-published, like more than likely you, you're a team of one, you know, and, and maybe you have a, a spouse or a dear friend who's willing yeah. to help you out in your endeavors. Mm -hmm. But when you submit your book for awards, there are judges and, and agents and editors connected to that particular platform that's offering the award. And then they do their own set of publicity to say, these are our award winners for 2020. Yes. So the opportunity to connect, again, it's a platform. So winning an award, now you're connected to that platform, and then they are going to raise you up and amplify your book because they deemed it worthy to win an award. So mm -hmm. even if your book has been out for a year, 
if you win an award, now you can do a whole new campaign. Most awards give you a seal that you can put on your book. You update Amazon, schools and libraries and bookstores. They're aware that you've won an award and it can breathe new life into it. It's basically validation. Mm -hmm. and when you're self-published, that's what most self-published authors need to get to the next level is they need validation from established outlets and entities that are, you know, that understand how publishing works and say, even though you did this book yourself, it's worthy of the accolades that we're giving it. Like, yeah, I, that makes so much sense to me. And in a way, it's them putting their their name that's already an established presence behind yeah. your name that people maybe would be willing to take a risk on buying your book yeah. that they wouldn't otherwise take because they recognize the name of that award. So and how do you it? Like it does, you know, like distributors get that list as well. And then sometimes they'll contact you and say, oh, you know, we saw that you won the Writer's Digest self-published um, book of the year, we, we would love to distribute this um, book, your book to the outdoors in the Midwest. So wow. again, that information gets out there and then opportunities are coming to you. A lot of times some of these awards are connected where you're self-published and then part of the prize is that you get a literary agent. Oh, interesting. And then cool. if you're working on something else, that literary agent is now going to represent you to help you get your second book sold, knowing that you won an award for the, for the first one. So it Got opens it. up a world of opportunities for authors who are looking to make a career out of it. Got it. That's great. So actually, I know that you have a, a wonderful ebook giveaway for yeah. that's got awards that people can apply for. So I'm going to just say we'll have the link below where you can click through and get Dawn's own list of her favorite awards for yeah. self-published authors. There's 15 awards you, sub you should submit your self-published book to. And again, these are notable awards for um, fiction, nonfiction, children's books, and even poetry and unpublished work. So if you're working on like an essay and it's just on your computer, there are awards here that will say, we'll submit your unpublished essay. You might win a thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so yeah. cool. Great. Well, I encourage everyone to download that and to stay connected to Dawn because she's an amazing publicist. She's also got all sorts of other things that she does, <laughs> literary agent, all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but really, I mean, I have learned so much about self-published publicity since I met you that I just had to share you with, with the rest of our viewers. So thank you well, thank so you, much Kelly. for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been great. This has been great.